What is up everybody back again? Well, guess what? It's November and you know what that means. That means fishing tip time, guys. Last month we talked about the best baits for October. A lot of you guys love that little series that we're doing. So we're into November now. We're gonna talk about the best baits and techniques to catch more fish in November because not everybody's hunting right now. Like me, I'm doing a lot of fishing. We got a lot of TV shows we're shooting. We're doing a lot of little team tournaments and stuff. Fishing a lot of high school events with Hillary. We're having a ball, but you know, this little series I enjoy doing. So I'd really want to encourage everyone to drop a comment down below and let me know some of your favorite November fishing tips because hey as I as I'm going to tell you some our viewers love to read the comments and see what you guys have to say as far as special little lures or techniques or things that you guys might really be into because you know different parts of the country have different things going on in November. It's that kind of that transition. I'm still in shorts and t-shirts and somewhere else in the country you might be in a snowmobile jacket right now. But that being said, November fishing tips are coming up guys, but I want to say a huge shout out to Decked, okay? This video series is presented by them, so a huge shout out to them. Also a huge shout out to Mystery Tackle Box. We'll get into that in just a minute. But you know, the deck system, guys, I've had it in the back of my trucks now. Ever since they came out with these things, it's been eight or nine years now. This material here is super, super tough. You can put 2,000 pounds of payload on top of the deck system. This is all weatherproof, waterproof. I literally just spray it out with a water hose when I want to clean back here, but I can put all my fish and tackle in each one of these drawers. It keeps everything safe and secure, which is nice. It has a locking drawer mechanism right there, which is very good. And, um, and look, for hunting season, if you are into hunting, you can take all your fishing gear out, obviously, and replace it with all your hunting gear, guns, camo, whatever you want to do. And the great thing about it, you can lock these, but also when you close your tailgate and you lock your tailgate, no one's going to be able to get into that deck system as well. So it's, it's a really safe and secure system, guys. And a uh, huge shout out to those guys right there. And then also want to show you this right here real quick. My Lear Locker. Can't say enough of good things about Lear and the cap. With this Lear Locker right here, guys, this slides down. I can put all my, all my gear on top of this thing right here. We have hats, all these different things. We're on the road, we, lo we load this up with a bunch of stuff. So I love the setup, right? The Lear cap, the Lear Locker, and of course the deck system. So uh, again, huge shout out to deck system. We're gonna drop a link in the description down below. If you guys uh, have a pickup truck and wanna know what size would fit in yours, be sure to check out that link and, and jump into it. But listen, let, let me, speaking of jumping into it, let's jump into what I'm going to give away this month because I'm also going to announce the six winners. But because Mystery Taco Box has been so awesome for us, they've actually sent me four MTB Pro boxes, which are full of really great tackle items, okay? And last month, we did give away three of these and three other types of boxes, and those winners are, I'm going to announce them right now, they're going to pop up on the screen, but those winners are Clayton Herbster, Trevor Hoffman, Fishing with DJ, I like that. Colton Dickerson, Southern Wind Outdoors, and Aaron Tackett. Guys, you are the winners from last month's uh, tackle. But guys, all you have to do this month to win these four is absolutely nothing. But do me a favor, drop a comment down below so we can pick you. And if you don't mind, share the video, like the video, and also um, just drop some comments down below. Let some people know about what we're doing. And again, I would love to hear those fishing tips that you might have for your November fishing. So we're gonna give these away at the beginning of December next month. But now let's jump right into what you're here for, and that's to talk about the best baits for November. All right, November is a time of the year where, again, it's that transition. Depending on where you are in the country, you could actually be getting really cold right now. I'm looking at some of the temperatures across the country. You're seeing some 30s at night, depending on uh, where you are in the country, and some highs that are topping out around 60. And what that does, that really puts those fish in a feed bag, okay? They, they start feeding up like crazy. And, and in November, that's the time of the year that, that, you know, like in October, I'm still flipping. I'm still throwing creature baits. I'm throwing some soft plastics, but in November, it's kind of when I transition mostly over into what I'd say the hard bait time of the year, moving bait category, your square bills, your spinner baits, your jerk baits. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit because, you know, you, you can catch a lot of fish right now because they're feeding on shad. I mean, that's what they're, they're currently looking for right now. They're getting ready to feed up as much as they can because they know winter's right around the corner. And so a jerk bait is a great, great lure to kind of start off with. This little bait right here has actually caught the snot out of them at Lay Lake in, in uh, Alabama last year in November when we were there in December. Um, it's a suspending, shallow running jerk bait right here. And again, look at the color, just a shad color. I'm not gonna do any real bright, crazy stuff. Everything's gonna be shad oriented. I like stuff with a lot of flash or just kind of your white or your bone colors. The biggest tip I can give you with jerk baits 
is figuring out what depth those fish are in. And that's gonna dictate a lot, okay? This is a shallow running uh, jerk bait here. I'm gonna rig it on 10 pound line. I'm also gonna rig it on a shorter rod, not a real long rod, like a six and a half to a 610 medium action rod. 10 pound line, fluorocarbon is what I like. And that bait right here is gonna get down about five to eight feet of water. Uh, if those fish are suspended on bait or chasing bait close to the surface, you see them schooling a lot of times, blowing up on stuff, that's when this jerk bait's gonna be really, really key. If they're deeper, right, and you're in an area of the country that those fish, you see them on the graph, you see the bait on the graph, that bait is down 10 or 15 feet, and those bass are in and around that range, you're gonna need a deeper jerk bait than this. This one right here, I'd put on the sideline and go to a deeper diving jerk bait. So like some of the ones I have here, like you look at this one here, how much longer that lip is, right? I mean, you look at that lip versus that lip, that's a deep diving one, this is a regular. So this is gonna be, you know, four to six, five to eight, depending on your line. This bait right here is gonna get eight to 10, okay? And that's gonna get it down there closer to that range. So picking that jerk bait that's the right depth. Here's the tip I can give you, is you don't wanna go underneath the fish. In the fall, I don't like to be underneath them, I like to be on top of them. So if they're in 15 foot of water, I don't need my jerk bait to go 15 or 16 or 17, I need my jerk bait to go 10 or 12, because they can look up and they're gonna see it and attack. Uh, I don't want to go underneath them. So again, if those fish were shallow, right, and those fish were in five to six, seven foot of water, and you should be throwing this, but if for some reason you picked this one up and you went underneath that bait fish uh, and those schools of fish, you're probably not going to get the same amount of bite. So paying attention to how deep your bait's going, knowing where your bait is, and knowing where those, where those bass are hanging out. Panoptics, of course, is a very big tool. I use my live scope for that. I can, I can quickly tell where these fish are hanging out, what depth they're in. So the Garmin live scope is an absolute must have when you're trying to locate that proper depth. But those jerk baits are cool. You know, and, and as the colder it gets, you're gonna kinda change your retrieve slightly. But you know, right now, early November, most of the places in the country, you can still fish them pretty fast. You know, like a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, 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 pause, twitch, 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 pause. Something kind of erratic, right? But again, Take the clues from the fish. If you see the bass chasing shad around, knocking them out of the water, you can obviously go uh, a lot faster with that to retrieve. If it's one of those days where they're just down there, they're not feeding, they're not actively chasing stuff, that's when you might have to slow down a little bit. Maybe give it a two to three second pause in between each one of your uh, series of jerks. So, you know, you just kind of play around with it. Jerk baiting is, is a, a very, very effective way of catching them in the fall. Probably the number one way. Pay very close attention to not only the depth that this jerk bait goes, but also the size of it too. This is a a pretty good size one right here. They make smaller and shorter ones, you know, like this one right here. Sometimes you have to go to a smaller one, okay? Sometimes going to just one step smaller will make all the difference in the world. So, uh, again, jerk baits, probably the number one thing to throw in the fall, November time frame. but again, make really good decisions on uh, the particular bait that you're throwing. So now, the other thing that I like to throw in the fall is a spinner bait. Let's talk about that. All right, guys, spinner baits. You know, spinner baits have kind of made a little comeback the last couple of years. That, you know, I made a joke the other day that, you know, ever since chatterbaits came out, like they said, fish stopped biting spinner baits. And it was kind of true. Like it was, I don't know, five or six years there that I, I didn't even hardly catch a fish on a spinner bait. It was just chatterbait, chatterbait, chatterbait. But now it's kind of making a comeback. And I don't know, maybe those fish have heard that vibration of that chatterbait so many times they're getting a little sketchy. But, but right here, we've got two different kinds. I've got a big full size spinner bait right here. And I've also got a little miniature, right? This is the Guggen Squad mini zinger. They just sent it to me. And in the fall, again, you hear me talking about picking the right size bait, like on those jerk baits. Picking the right size bait is like almost the most important thing, right? Because it just depends on what they're feeding on. They get so dialed in on little bait this time of the year that <laughs> you'll find them feeding on shad that's like this big and you're throwing something that's a little bit too big and they just will not eat it. Um, but so this little spinner bait right here, this little Zinger Mini by Ketchco in collaboration with the Guggen Squad, it was a great bait, uh, a great hook, good blades on it, hand tied skirt. It's a great little bait right here. I've caught a lot of fish on the regular size one and uh, that's, a, that's a definite, definite go-to right there. Or you can do the big size right here. This is gonna be bigger when you're gonna get down a little bit deeper, maybe some deeper grass. This is a, a 5 8 ounce size, so it's a lot bigger, double willow leaf of course. Again, the biggest tip on spinnerbaits for me, and I tell people this all the time, it's like, if you told somebody, hey, how do you, how do you fish a spinnerbait? You would say, just cast it out and reel it in. And that's kind of true, right? But I like to give it a little character. I like to, as I cast that spinnerbait out there and I'm reeling it through the water column, 
instead of just reeling it non-stop steady the entire time, I'm gonna change the angle of the rod slightly. I may pause it just for one split half turn every once in a while, not overdo it, but give the bait a little character. And what that does is it makes that, that skirt kind of undulate, kind of makes that skirt flare and change. It makes the flash on these blades change its consistency. So as it's flashing real consistent and you do a little mini pause or change the speed of it, it changes that flash, that vibration slightly. And a lot of times that's what will key those fish in on biting it. So just give it a little character, make some long casts with it, get it around cover. Spinner bait again, you know, is a great choice when you're fishing around the shoreline, around dock. Uh, grass, of course, lay down trees, places that those fish might be hanging out feeding on some bait that you can kind of get, get in there kind of tight, a spinner bait your go-to. Uh, Line-wise, rod-wise, for me, I'm pretty much fishing a seven-foot medium heavy to a heavy action rod. Uh, seven-foot medium heavy on this particular one here, maybe a heavy action on this bigger spinner bait. I'm going to fish it with monofilament a lot of times. It's one of the few times I fish monofilament still is on a spinner bait in topwaters. I like 17 to 20 pound monofilament. It casts good. And, and you don't need the light line. You're reeling that, that spinnerbait through the water column. You don't need it to be super lightweight and all that. And the fish are seeing the line. No, they're coming after that blade. They're coming after that flash. So 17 to 20 pound monofilament. And I like a high speed reel, believe it or not. A lot of people will throw a slower speed reel on spinnerbaits because they want to slow it down a little bit. I like that high speed reel because when that fish hits it, especially on a long cast, I can reel up a lot of slack and swing and get that hook drove really, really good into that fish. So. That's pretty much my choices there. Now, the other thing that I'll do on these is I'll add a trailer, okay? I'll add a trailer. This is a, a traditional zoom trailer right here. They call it the little split tail. It's kind of what everybody over the years have used. And I'll put that on, add a little bit of some bulkiness to it, especially if that bait's a little bit bigger. Kind of kind of adds a little bit to it, add a little, adds a little more meat back here to the back. I'll do the same thing on this little small one, but I'm gonna obviously cut that, that trailer down a lot. You can obviously put a little saucy swimmer on the back as well, but, but a lot of times I like the straight tailed type trailers. Uh, they just undulate, they just kind of flutter around a little bit, and a lot of times they'll draw that bigger strike. So those are my spinner baits color wise. I mean, you see right here, chartreuse and white. Anytime you're in a little bit stained water, your chartreuse and whites or your chartreuse. Um, but when I get a little bit clear, I'm gonna go to my all whites or even my translucent colors, like my uh, translucent shads or blueback herrings and just different things like that. But just try to match the hatch, give it a little character, have fun with that spinner bait. You'll catch a lot of fish. All right, top water time. You better get it in while you can because December is not much of a top water time. It usually gets a little too cold in December to do that. But November, especially early November, middle part of the country, top waters, your spooks, your buzz baits your whopper plopper style baits. This is my box full of whopper ploppers here, guys. I've got the river to sea ones, I've got El Chapo's, I've got bone ones, I've got big ones, I've got little ones, I've got the balsa ones, and I've even got the new revolver by Ketchco. This is the Guggen Squad revolver in collaboration with Ketchco. I love this thing, it's pretty ingenious actually. When you look at how everyone else did all their uh, their props on the back, right? The, the Ketchco decided to put it right there in the middle. Makes that bait really track, really nice and true. And I like the fact that when they do come up and hit this thing, you've got all the hooks right there on the back. Because a lot of times they want to hit right there in that prop wash. So this little bait right here, it casts like a dream. But again, whopper plopper style baits, running down the shorelines. Where I like to fish these, uh, especially if I'm in the Midwest, you know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, um, flat banks, flat banks, right? Flat, rocky banks. I'm going to make real long casts, parallel to the shoreline, way up shallow. Like I'm literally going to try to bounce this thing off the bank half the time and just reel it right through there, a steady retrieve, let this bait just make all that noise. This, uh, this spins around and makes a little gurgle and uh, those fish can't resist it, they love it. But I'm not targeting steep banks, I'm targeting the flat banks and that's real important because those fish, this time of the year, they love to kind of chase bait on those flatter banks and run them all the way up into the shallow waters and pin them. Kind of like you've seen uh, like those Nat Geo shows where you see like the, the sharks and the killer whales pushing, pushing the stuff up on the beach. The same kind of thing. Those bass like to get on those flatter banks. So running main lake creeks, back in pockets on those flat banks, whopper plopper, buzz bait, spooks can be deadly. Now, typically when I'm fishing this bait, I'm going to fish it on straight braid because I'm reeling it straight through the water. I'm not stopping it. So I'm going to put it on like 50 pound P-Line X braid, seven foot medium heavy or a seven four medium heavy. 
uh, something that I can cast pretty far, but yet still have some accuracy to it. I don't want a super stiff rod because I'm not really setting the hook. I'm letting these treble hooks do their job, letting this fish come up behind it, grab onto it, and uh, just kind of leaning on them a little bit and starting to reel. But braid is really, really good. If I'm fishing the spook, I'm going to throw a uh, braid with a mono or fluorocarbon leader, uh, mostly a mono leader, or I'm going to throw it on straight mono. Buzz bait, I can get away with either one really. This just kind of depends on where you're fishing, but I do like straight braid, especially when I'm in the south. But I'm going to tell you right now, guys, this might be the last month you'll catch fish on a top water most, most places in the country because it's going to get a little too cold. So have fun on these. Now, let's move into my last one. This one right here has won a lot of money for me. All right, guys, check this out right here. Right here. Who, who knows what it is? There it is right there. Oh, yeah, a little underspin. It's a fish head spin right here. Here's another one that I got rigged up with a little saucy swimmer on the back of it. This is made by, I think, Pulse Lures. I think this is actually Matt Airy's uh, little design that he had given me uh, late in the season last year. It's a little, little, little rusted up. It's pretty much made it to the practice bin at this point. But this underspin right here is an absolute fish catcher at this time of the year. Again, as those bass are feeding on bait and streaking through those bait pods offshore, you can take this, get it down to that proper depth, and swim it through that, that, that school of bait and catch a lot of fish. You can also fish it in the drains or in the back of the creeks. If they're up shallow, like say in the back of a pocket, like a little creek drain in seven, eight, ten foot of water, you can fish this, kind of flutter it up off the bottom, let it fall, flutter it up off the bottom and let it fall. Most of the time I like to fish it uh, with a little boot tail like that, but I also will throw it on a straight tail like a fluke, like a zoom super fluke or a tiny fluke, just kind of again matching a hatch, right? Um, this bait right here, when I said I've won a lot of money on it, I won the Forestwood Cup on this bait right here. $600,000, guys. Uh, now, I caught fish on lots of different lures that week, but the bulk of what I weighed in, what, me what meaningful at least fish I'm, I weighed in, was on this bait right here. Uh, I, you know, it, it's a fish catcher. I, I typically like to throw it on a little bit lighter line, my 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon. And rod wise, I mean, typically I'm going to throw it on a longer rod, like a 7.6. Uh, that Lunker Series rod that you see me throw a lot of my little swim baits on, it's a great rod for that. It's not too stiff, but you can still get that bait out there pretty far. And I like it on a high-speed reel again. Typically, there's two ways that I do it. One is I'll throw it out there, count it down to where I think the fish are. Again, right above where I think the fish are kind of holding, and reel it steady and slow through that water column in and around that bait or in and around those fish. And a lot of times, we'll come right up to it and grab the back of it. The other way is I'll flutter it down. So I'll, I'll throw it out on some schooling fish, Maybe they're busting, I'll let it hit the water, I'll let it sink a little bit, I'll put it in gear, reel it up, lift my rod up, let it sink again, but kind of tight line it on the way down. Don't let's let it fall totally slack. Kind of keep your line a little taut at the same time as it falls, and a lot of times, boom, they'll hit it on the fall. You'll feel it go weightless or you'll feel them thump it, and that's why you need that longer rod and that higher speed reel, because when I feel that, I can just take off reeling real fast and a lot of times drive that hook in them. The third way that I like to fish it is in those, you know, the bottom of those ditches. If those fish are in the back of a creek, uh, it doesn't really matter the depth, if it's maybe 10, 12, 15 feet deep, or even deeper, uh, if those fish are close to the bottom, I'll throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and just reel it basically on the bottom. Just let it kind of dredge, and that blade's making noise, it's bouncing in the bottom, kind of like a crankbait, you know, it kind of just, it's a different approach. Those fish see that, they'll go down there, and they'll feed on it. But that, that underspin right there is, is pretty important. Size-wise, typically three-eighths to half kind of depending on what I'm doing. I don't get much use out of a quarter ounce one, but a three eighths to a half is about what I throw. I've, you know, I've even thrown three quarter ounce depending on you know, how deep you want to get those things. All right, so that is that. I need to get some more of those baits from Matt Erie. That's a, the Pulse, and he, he's been working on that thing a long time, guys, so I'm sure that bait's available by now. Uh, you definitely want to check it out. Um, go to, it should be a good one. So those are my tips for November tips. So again, do me a huge favor, guys. Drop a comment down below and let me know a fishing tip that you like. You would like our viewers to read, okay? I know there's, depending on where you live in the country, you might have a certain little technique that you like. Love to hear about it. And, uh, and secondly, I hope, uh, I hope uh, you guys won the boxes here. We've got four of the Mystery Tackle Boxes to give out. So a huge shout out to Mystery Tackle Box. We're also going to drop a link in the description because you can save in 20% from right now until Black Friday, okay? From right now to Black Friday, you're gonna save 20% on your box. So that's a huge savings. So be sure to click the link in my description down below and check it out, guys. And uh, love you. And uh, we'll see you in December on the next fishing tip for sure. In the meantime, we've got lots of cool stuff coming your way. And uh, every Sunday and every Wednesday at five o'clock, we're gonna be posting. So we wanna get everybody back on a schedule 
and really appreciate the support, guys. And if you do tag me uh, on Instagram, we'll reshare the post. So be sure to uh, take some really cool fish pictures or hunting pictures or whatever. Tag the Scott Martin Challenge. Let me see it. We'll post you up as well. Thanks for all the support, guys. We're out of here. Bam! And if, you know, if it's 7, 8, 10, 15, 20 feet deep, and, and I want to get it out. <laughs> 7, 8, 10, 15, 20 feet. Okay, here, let me say that again. Yeah. <laughs> let me say I'm that like, again. Whoa.